Yeah, welcome. <laughs> welcome, everybody, <laughs> to the Basement Show podcast short. All right, what do we got today, Baby T? one. Baby. We're going to talk about um, the Joshua Ward house. Okay. And the um, the legend of Sheriff Corwin. Okay, here we go. So the Joshua Ward house has some rich history behind it. Built in 1784, it is one of the first brick homes built in Salem, Massachusetts, obviously. Yes. Uh, a noted bricklayer and woodworker at the time, Samuel McIntyre, did all of the house's interior woodwork, including the original staircase that remains his oldest surviving work. Wow. I know. Since 2015, the Joshua Ward House has served as a hotel. Uh, but before that, in 1983, it was added to the Salem's downtown district. And prior to that, in 78, it was, uh, that was my phone, on the National uh, Register of Historic Places. So set back from Washington Street, it's a beautiful federal-style home built for the successful merchant Joshua Ward in 1784. Uh, the property has older connections that date back to the witchcraft trials. Oh. Today, visitors can still see ragged stones along the building foundation, which are all that remain of the 1692 home of George Corwin. Cool place to visit. It is, if you get a yeah. chance to go check it out, folks, do it. Definitely. Uh, don't go after September. No. It's very crowded That's in right. Salem after September. That's right. yeah. Pick his spots. <laughs> <laughs> Pick his spots, kid. Mm. Uh, so regarded was this residence that during a visit to Salem in 1789, George Washington specifically requested to stay in the house. Operating as a tavern during the 19th century, it was built on the same site that jo uh, Sheriff George Corwin used to live one of the worst individuals involved with the rich trials. Bad man. <laughs> oh, he was. Yeah. Let's find out why. Well, we'll find out why he's so bad today. <laughs> Sheriff Corwin is famous for his involvement in the witch trials, mm. and that is the main reason that it is he. Uh, it is haunted. Mm. This man was beyond sadistic. That's right. Twisted. In his role, Sheriff Corwin escorted the condemned by cart. From prison to the execution site at Proctor's Ledge on Gallows Hill. Mm. <laughs> Where are we going today? Yeah. Gallows Hill. Oh, that sounds exciting and beautiful. Not. I don't want to go. Yeah, no. Never. As request, as required by law, Corwin would confiscate property of condemned prisoners, not land because they weren't allowed to do that, mm. uh, but belongings such as livestock, hay, apples, corn, household goods. Uh, like kettles, pewter, furniture, jewelry, mm. all that stuff. Uh, it's a common misconception that witchcraft accusations were part of a deliberate attempt to gain land of neighbors or fellow community members. At this time, English law allowed the seizure of a felon's possessions, but this did not extend to real estate. Uh, the worldly possessions of a married woman who was convicted were considered the property of the husband. Hmm. Uh, as such, there was nothing to confiscate from the condemned married women, but the possessions of a man and widows were allowed to be confiscated. Wow. Uh, be warned. <laughs> I'm warning you. Warning. The methods he used are not for the faint of heart and should stand to serve as a reminder as to what pl took place at the witch trials. Because Sheriff, uh, Sheriff Corwin would often interrogate the accused at the Joshua Ward house, with his heinous techniques earning him the nickname The Strangler. Oh, lovely. <laughs> uh, one nearly unmentionable method of interrogation involved Cor Sheriff Corwin tying the neck of his victim to their ankles tightly with rope until blood gushed out of the nose. Wow. Yeah. Damn. Not only did he use the Joshua Ward House for his interrogations, uh, but it's also rumored that he used his the basement in his own home to torture and victimize the accused. And not this basement, thank God. No, not in this basement, right. no. Well, whether they were truly witches or not, his methods were so severe that they would often pledge allegiance to Satan just to end the horrific punishment. Wow. Of course, thereafter, they would usually be executed for doing so, mm -hmm. which is unfair circumstance. <clears throat> so you imagine, like, He's doing these horrible things, and you're like, yep, Satan's cool. Yeah, exactly. He's I'd, like, well, now you're going to die. I'd like to die now, please. That's, <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, there have been multiple witnesses who have claimed that they have been strangled by an unseen pair of hands while visiting the Joshua Ward house. Oof. Equally as strange are reports of warm, half-melted candle wax present in rooms <clears throat> where no candles are supposed to be. And perhaps the most frightening of all encounters are that guests having sudden, unexplained scratches and burns on their body and arms. Mm. Uh, in what may be bittersweet revenge for all the horrendous acts that Sheriff Corwin committed, if the reports of being strangled by an, uh, by an unseen entity are to, be, are to be believed, then it sounds as if the strangler has been cursed to forever wander the very halls he used to patrol in search of his next victim. Wow. Condemn the like button and be sure to hit subscribe. That's right. Send it. <laughs> Make it pay. That's right. And watch Thanks. it all. Watch Basement you know. Show on the go. Basement Show on the go. Basement Show podcast on the go, y'all. Yes. Check us out. Shop us around. Take us up and down. Sideways, up and down through your town. <laughs> All right? And we We're love on. you. We're on social media. That's Instagram, right. TikTok. Check um, it out. We're streaming things are streamed. All yeah. of it. I Hot Radio, kid. Yeah, kid. Shop us. We love you. <laughs> mm. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Yes. Yes.